started yet? Presbyterian Church. We just have a couple announcements this morning. First of all, we ask that if you are not vaccinated, um, that you wear a mask. That is a requirement. If you are vaccinated, you do not need to wear a mask. Um, our blessing box, we could use your help. Um, it is constantly replenished, but there are a lot of people in need. So, um, Blessing box is located on the Lafayette side of our church, and anything you can spare to put in the blessing box would be wonderful. I'm sure it'll go to good use. And that's all the announcements. So maybe we could all quiet ourselves, clear our minds, and get ready to worship in God's house. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Come and let us worship God together. You'll find the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. If you could read along with me. God, forgive us the times we have failed to love our neighbors. Forgive us when we believe that some people are outside of your love. Help us to see as you see. Help us to care as you care. 
Help us to have your heart of love. Saints, we're so happy to see you here this morning and those of you who are at home. God promises to forgive us if we turn from our sinful behavior. Let us pray for the strength to do just that. We believe in God's promises. Let us try together. together. Amen. Sacrifice 
given by one grace, one way, one truth, just one life, one Lord above, trusted through one's faith. taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk around in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I say, you are God's children of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations belong to you. Second reading is from Romans 8, 31 through 38. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who, do, who, who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, will intercede for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am Randy Kramer. Um, as you know, um, Many of you know I am an avid golfer, and I had nothing to do with it raining today so I could be here. <laughs> but if I did, you better listen to what I have to say. Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, so, I've been, you know, I've been in church all of my life, and I've listened to pastors give sermons, and I was always impressed by pastors who started their sermon with um, some sort of anecdote that was funny, got people relaxed, listening, uh, and of course, the really good ones would tie it in to the sermon that they were about to say. I'm not going to do any of that, um, because I'm not that clever. But I did find some Christian jokes that I thought I'd start with, uh, just because. So what do you call a Bible character who just pulled into church? A parking lot. <laughs> what did Adam say when he was asked his favorite holiday? It's Christmas. Eve. <laughs> and finally, how did jo Joseph make his coffee? He brewed it. He brewed it. Okay, enough silliness. When I was asked if I was interested in giving a sermon at Lafayette, I immediately said yes. Not so much because I had anything specific in mind to say, but because I knew it would be a challenge. I knew it would force me to examine my faith. Now let me get something very clear right away. I don't believe I have any more right to be up here than anyone else. I don't believe I have unique insights that can only come from me. I guess I said yes because sometimes I feel like I have to test my faith. I have to dig down deep into it and see if anything else is happening. 
I need to make sure that my core belief and faith are still there, not comfortably cruising along like someone out for a Sunday drive, but involved, committed. We read earlier from Romans, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I love that passage. Those words have always been so encouraging to me. But I think they come with a bit of a caveat. Yes, it's true that Christ's love and grace are never-ending and will always be there for us. But there's the catch that they are there for us, but we have to be receptive and prepared to not only receive them, but also to listen to them. I think that's one of the functions of Sunday service, to try and listen and discern Christ's love and where it can take us. But Sundays alone aren't enough. And if that service isn't compelling, you might not even be tuning into Christ's love at all. So how do we get ourselves to become receptors for Christ on a daily, even hourly basis? Well, I don't know about you, but sometimes I need a visual reminder to get things done. Whether it's my Google Calendar, or a written list of calls to make and emails to write in a workday, or my neighbors putting out their garbage and recycling totes on Tuesday nights to remind me that Wednesday is garbage day, visual references often prove to be the necessary kick in the pants that I need. And that got me thinking about what would Jesus do wristbands that my kids used to wear. I wonder what happened to them. I also wonder how it all came about. Here's what I found. What Would Jesus Do is a slogan that saw peak popularity in the United States during the 1990s, when millions of kids were seen wearing WWJD bracelets, wristbands, t-shirts, hats, and much more, year after year. A Kansas preacher and author named Charles Sheldon, active in the 1880s and after, is largely given credit for the trendy phrase many people still refer to. In 1897, he put together the book that would become, In His Steps, what Would Jesus Do?, which has sold over 30 million copies. In 1989, nearly a century later, a youth leader read Sheldon's book and began sharing WWJD with her students to encourage them to live in such a manner. After her initial run of merchandise sold out, neighboring towns quickly noticed the trend and began making merchandise of their own. It rapidly grew into a nationwide sensation that has since inspired dozens of creative works, including films, songs, and even board games. Despite disagreements in how WWJD should be thought of and lived out in one's life, it was and is an effective effort to balance two realities about Jesus, Christ's deep loving approach to personal relationships and his constant focus on truth in action are both defining components of his character. God is both perfectly loving and perfectly truthful, and Christ's life displays this for all who are willing to learn from it. Multiple Christian writers who came after Sheldon have condemned his thinking as self-righteous or even anti-Christian on the grounds that it encourages people to think their behavior is on a par with Christ's. But defenders of WWJD state that he is not attempting to equate human capacity with Christ, rather human action can become more God-honoring and biblically aligned via intentional thought about how Christ wants us to live. I think who Jesus is and what he can do is more needed now than ever. The internet and Facebook algorithms have allowed millions of people to remain in their own information silos as long as they want. <laughs> you can now find endless information that supports your own preconceived notions while blocking as many people and pages as you like. Why involve yourself with people you dislike if you can find out if you can find more people that are just like you? Over the years, political polarization has only grown in the United States. Individuals across both Democratic and Republican Party lines have more fervently supported their leaders and more strongly rejected the op opposite party. So where does that leave us? Well, let me share a few thoughts with you. For the last few years, an old high school friend of mine and me had been having significant conflicts when it came to political views. We weren't super close friends, but we had gone to school together and had kept in touch after. I was a willing party in our disagreements. I gave as much as I got in our back and forths. Well, one thing led to another, and our differences caused us to end all communication between us. I was fine with that. It seemed almost inevitable, and quite honestly, it was somewhat of a relief when it happened. 
A few weeks ago, I learned that his father, whom I had known since high school, had passed away. All of a sudden, those disagreements seemed unimportant. Death had shown me how I completely lost the true spirit of Jesus in this relationship. I never once asked myself, what would Jesus do during our clashes? I was cons more concerned with proving him wrong, or proving me right, or simply winning. It all seems very pointless now. During COVID, shortly after the murder of George Floyd, our previous pastor, Pastor Micah, had wanted to put up a Black Lives Matter sign. To be sure, this was a politically charged time, and it is always difficult to balance politics and faith. But if we are truly asking ourselves, what would Jesus do, we would be able to find an answer. Ephesians 6.12 states, for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness. Jesus never hesitated to speak out on behalf of the oppressed and to question the practices of the powerful. On Lafayette's Facebook page, it states, we exist for the good of other people. Pastor Micah's request for a Black Lives Matter sign was turned down by session. Pastor Micah resigned from Lafayette in April without having another pastoral appointment. What would Jesus do about COVID? It has created and continues to create more division. Here at Lafayette, the mass mandate for unvaccinated people is not really enforced. The argument from some is that antibodies are present and so a mask is not required. Well, I'm not a scientist, although I can read their findings, but regardless, I will leave that argument alone. What is very clear is that an unvaccinated person not wearing a mask can make other people very uncomfortable. And isn't that wrong? When I look back at Jesus' life, I don't ever remember him ignoring other people's feelings just to make himself more comfortable. He would call institutions and people out if he thought their actions were wrong, but he would never look out for himself before his neighbor. Philippians 2.4, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Romans 12.10, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, give preference to one another in honor. Galatians 6.10, so then, while we have an opportunity, let us do good to all people. Last week, I watched on Facebook as Pastor Jerry stood up here and asked this question of the congregation, where do we go from here? I certainly don't have the answer, but I would suggest that Anyone involved in these future decisions will lead off every meeting with, what would Jesus do? Maybe even throw it in a few times during discussions, just to remind us that Jesus' wisdom and love is there at all times for us, helping us to overcome our own human limitations, guiding us to a better place. Say it with me now. What would Jesus do? Think of it as reminding us of what we should do, how we should think. Let it be our equivalent to my neighbors putting out their totes and reminding me that Wednesday is pickup day. WWJD. to serve as elders and deacons. And we would be thrilled if you would approach. I happen to be the chair this year. If you have interest in serving as an elder or a deacon, we would love to have you come and participate and be part of moving this church forward. Um, the only requirement is that you be a member of Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church and have a willingness to serve. Um, my phone number is not listed, and I'm not going to put it out on Facebook, but um, you can always call our church office, and Patty will um, get you in touch with me. So just a little, you know, piggy bank on what um, Randy said. We, we can all serve, and we can all have an influence in the decisions that this church makes moving forward, hopefully, quote-unquote, post-COVID. So the prayers of the people this morning. Um, if there's anyone who's um, requesting specific prayer, if you'd raise your hand, I will. Um, we will pray for 
that specific prayer, and we know that all of you probably have your own personal prayers, which we will pray for as well. So, Tracy? Um, my brother-in-law, Kevin, um, he has a dog, Willie, that's an older dog, and he just found out um, that Willie has cancer, and um, it's been a really tough time for him because he loves his dog. The dog has diabetes, he gives the dog shots every day, I mean, he's practically blind, and he's just at odds what to do, you know. Um, he's walking around, he's moving, but it, it's just been really tough for him. That's a tough decision. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody else? Janelle? Um, I have prayer for Thanksgiving, our neighbor, uh, Christy, who's been battling cancer since maybe March, April, just every result after every treatment is just so positive. Oh, that's wonderful. Paul? morning if we could all pray for all of the things we have heard this morning we pray for Tracy's brother-in-law Kevin who has a dog who I'm sure he is named Lily who I'm sure he is struggling with the idea of whether or not to put her down and a lifelong companion whether it be a dog or a human is um, very difficult so we pray for him to make the decision that is best for both of them we also um, are so grateful for um, Chrissy's recovery. We've prayed for her in church um, over these months, and um, she's gotten all positive results, and so that's wonderful, and we thank um, Janelle for sharing that. And for um, Paul's friend Jim, who is aging, hopefully wonderfully, but his wife is currently undergoing um, chemo and uh, I'm sure he could use our prayers of support and guidance and ways to help her. So with that, we also pray for our church, for guidance for how we are going to move forward. Um, it is important that we maintain a worship facility on this corner and that we reach out to our community and together and collectively we can find ways to spread love and figure out what would Jesus do. So with that, I ask you to pray with me in the words that we've been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, this morning it is our time of offering. And we know that everyone who, you know, might like to contribute to our church is not here. So I am going to tell you the ways in which we can all participate in helping to make this church a very viable and vibrant community. And be assured that we are good stewards of all money that we are able to take in for the spread of Christ's word. So today, um, by way of tithe and offering, there are four ways you can give. You can follow the link provided on your Facebook live screen located in the comments section. You can place your in-person gift in the offering plate directly behind you during the offertory or as you exit the building. Um, you can always find us online at elmwoodjesus.org to virtually give or you can mail us a check at 875 Elmwood Avenue, Buffalo, New York, 14222. However you may choose to give, may we all do it in worship of the Lord.
God, we are so grateful for all of the tithes and offerings that people have provided this church. Please guide us always to discern the best use for the funds we receive and help us to stay a vibrant, worshiping community here on Elmwood and Lafayette. Help us to make a difference in our community and in our city. We thank you through Christ's name. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. <laughs> 